Hello and welcome to another video in the integration section from Rygate College Maths focusing on exponential and logarithmic integration. So integrating with exponentials as you'd imagine is relatively straightforward given what you already know about differentiating with exponentials. So we know That if we integrate, if we differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x, which means going backwards is also true. Now, much like with trigonometry, if we start putting numbers inside our function like that, we've again got to think about what would differentiate to get e times e to the power of a to the x? Well, we know when we differentiate, we times by the coefficient of x. So when we integrate, we divide by the coefficient of x. Important to note, like with integration, like with trig integration, this stays there. Okay, that doesn't change. This is really typical. This is a typical error that students make, is they get used to doing, oh, you increase the power by one, divide by the new power. Oh, we've got a power. So that rule applies. That's not the case. Okay, exponentials behave in their own way. Okay, so it's not that. Okay, that is not correct, so don't start doing that. With logarithms, the name of this video is perhaps a little misnomer. We're not going to integrate log uh, or ln x for now. That's a later video. Okay, So we're going to think about that later. What we are going to integrate or think about integrating is how do we get to ln x plus c? Well, we know ln x differentiates to 1 over x. So it makes sense that this is true. However, we have a problem. The problem with integration, or the, the, the thing about integration that causes a problem here, is about the domains. The domain of this function must also work as the domain of this function. So what is the domain of 1 over x? Well, it's anything that's not 0. You can't divide by 0 but you can divide by fractions, you can divide by positive numbers, you can divide by negative numbers. So this, the domain is x is any real number provided it's not zero. Why does that cause issues here? The problem is that we can't do log of a negative number. It doesn't work. So we need to change this so that this is no longer a problem. We can't do anything about the domain here. This domain has to remain the same. It's this that we need to think about changing. The problem is the fact that we can't do ln of a negative number. So how do we deal with that? How can we get rid of a negative? What function do we know that gets rid of a negative but keeps the x as it is? It's the modulus function. So in reality, the integral of 1 over x is ln of the modulus of x. 
plus C. This is really important because it gets around this problem. Now, like before, if we have the integral of a over x, the a just stays on the front. And this is true if we have it that way around as well. Because so we can think about this here as 1 over a times the next. Oh, sorry, 1 over a times 1 over x. Now we'll learn a general form later on that kind of potentially contradicts this, but in fact it doesn't, and I'll explain why when that video happens. So like we've been doing in other videos, I'll put I'll give you a few examples for you to have a work through, then I'll pop up my answers and go through them. So here are the six examples I'd like you to go through. Pause the video, have a go at them, then come back and check your answers against mine. Okay, here are my answers. So check yours. This is a four. And um, check yours with this one with f, although it doesn't speci specifically say that it needs to be in exact form, that's the implication. And unless you're told otherwise, it should be. Also, it should be simplified. So having this as, say, ln 25 minus ln 9 is not good enough. Writing it as ln 25 over 9, that's fine because it's the same thing, it's, it's simple enough. This is better. But there you go. So check your answers. I'm going to go through the last three. Hopefully the first three were just relatively simple. And you can just see that there's no problem there. The last three require a little bit of work. So I'm just going to go through those now. So with part D, we can see we've got the integral of 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 over e to the x. Typically, and we'll see this later on, when we're integrating fractions, you should always look and see the relationship between the top and the bottom. In this case, we can see this one simplifies relatively easily. Later on, that's not necessarily going to be the case. But we still need to simplify it. So we need to split it up. So we've got 2x over x plus 1 over x plus. Now our rule for exponentials works only for e to the power of something. We have a fraction, so we need to deal with that. Using our laws of indices, we need to rewrite this as e to the minus x. This simplifies to 2. So we are starting, we are now integrating 2 plus 1 over x plus e to the minus x. Looking at each bit in turn, 2 integrates to 2x, as it always has done. 1 over x, as we've seen, integrates to ln of modulus x. e to the minus x, so the e bit always stays there. And then we times by, sorry, divide by the coefficient of x. In this case, the coefficient of x is minus 1. And don't forget the plus c on the end. With e, e is a little bit more straightforward. So we can think about this as 6 times the integral of e to the 3x, which is 6 times. So again, the e bit stays there. And then we divide by the coefficient of x. 6 times a third is 2. So f, we are finding the integral between 3 and 5 of 2 over x dx. Now, from our rule, we've seen that 
2 over x is going to integrate to 2 ln modulus x. And we're integrating that between 5 and 3. Normally, we just substitute things in. And this is no different. doesn't matter that it learns. It's just always the way. Now, at this stage, we probably don't need the modular signs because the modulus of 5 is 5 and the modulus of 3 is 3. So we can scrap those now. They're irrelevant. They're useful if we were integrating, say, between minus 3 and 5. Then this would become minus 3. So we get 2 times ln 5 minus ln 3, which is 2 ln 5 over 3. As I said, you may want to rearrange this in a different way. So for instance, you may want to say, OK, this is ln 25 using the power law minus ln 9. So this is ln 25 over 9. That's fine. It's exactly the same. So as long as your answer is exact and simplified, that's fine. So hopefully you've now got a grasp of integrating trigonometric functions and exponential functions and one over and reciprocal functions. So one over x and things related to that. Later videos in this series are going to look at more complicated integration. So these fundamentals are really important. So make sure you do go and practice them. Thank you for watching.